Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 28th of January 2019 and the time has just gone 11.35 GMT. It's been a fairly quiet start to the European session this week. Uh, equity markets in Europe are, broadly speaking, a little lower. Um, there's still uncertainty about the US-China uh, trade relationship. And the two sides are due to meet later on this week. But um, the recent comments we've heard from various US, po- US policymakers uh, and trade representatives suggest that the gulf between the two sides remains fairly wide. But what's interesting is, even though we've, we've, uh, we've, we've seen, largely speaking, uh, slightly negative news in relation to US-China trade relations, Equity markets over the last number of weeks have still managed to kind of you know, push higher. So when we have had negative news, the market's gone down a small bit, but not really a whole lot. So it's almost like traders are kind of waiting for positive news to be announced in relation to US-China trade talk before we can then actually move to the upside. Because we had a fairly sizable sell-off in November and December uh, in global equity markets. We've seen a bounce back since very, from, from, late, from late December. Uh, we're now in late January, so broadly speaking, equity markets have had a, around the world have had a very decent bounce back in the last four weeks. And even when we have had setbacks between Washington, D.C. and Beijing in relation to trade, the equity markets have really haven't gone down a whole lot. So there isn't much buying sentiment out there, but at the same time, there isn't a lot of really negative uh, sentiment out there at, uh, at the same time. Keep in mind, we had a fairly dovish update from Mario Draghi of the European Central Bank. At the back end of last week, they've made it very clear that they're willing to support the Eurozone economy in ter- and willing to adjust um, the policy, monetary policy if they, f- if they feel they need to. So that was an indication that, yes, we know things aren't great in the Eurozone in terms of economic indicators, but we're willing to do something about it should we see, see the need to do so. And that's all to give, again, a, a bit of an assistance to, uh, to Eurozone equity markets in, in the last few sessions. Um, today, in terms of macro news, it's the kind of U.S.-China situation is the, is a is the kind of front and center. We've had a few corporate stories uh, over the over the weekend. Uh, there's a report that Acado and and uh, Martha Spencer's are in talks in relation to having a tie up between the two. Uh, M&S, the retailer, um, they have a fairly limited uh, reach in terms of delivery service. Uh, it's very in terms it's very selective, whereas there's, there, there's a report, uh, which neither side have confirmed, but there's a report nonetheless that the two sides are in talks in relation to striking a deal. ACAD, of course, uh, being the kind of online de- delivery service. And in the past year, or a couple of years, ACAD have been going around the world striking new t- partnerships with you know, companies in the UK, mainland Europe, and also North America. So that there's talk that we could have um, a, a, a deal that, uh, between them and M&S. Speaking of the British supermarket sector, uh, Tesco were also in the news over the weekend. Uh, there, was, there was a report going around uh, about potential for up to 15,000 job losses. The supermarket sector in the UK as a whole has been under a fairly big change uh, in, in recent years. The rise of Lidl and Aldi, the German deep, uh, deep discounters, and also the rise of online shopping has made some retailers maybe kind of move into distribution or merge with other companies or look look at very different other avenues of actually making money or in some cases spend more money online and less money on the high street. I'll uh, take a look now at some of the major uh, major markets starting off with the FTSE 100. So the FTSE 100 remains in the downward trend that's been in play now for a number of months. We can see here um, the middle of the, of the month the FTSE 100 got up to the kind of 7,000 mark, but it's been drifting lower uh, since again. We can notice here how the low of the day session has managed to drop below uh, the low of, of Thursday last week. So we are heading lower. There's been a change from positive momentum to negative momentum on the MACD indicator, on, on the MACD histogram. So the market's moving lower. We're seeing an increase in bearish in negative momentum. So the bears are more in control. So... We could look at pressing on lower from here, and if we do look to push further further south from here, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here, in round of 6,675, and a move below that could bring us back down towards 6,700, and a move below that could take us back down towards the December low of 6,536. Any moves to the upside are like like to run run, run into resistance uh, at 7,000. It's a big psychological number. We can see in a few occasions recently the market failed to get above us, so a break above 7,000 
uh, will bring us back to levels not seen since late November, and that could point to, uh, to further gains from there. Taking a look on the, uh, on the DAX, the German market. So the DAX have, has had a fairly decent bounce back since late December. So um, if you take a look at the, at the move higher here in late December, it's been pushing higher. Um, only on Friday we saw it at, at back levels not seen since early early um, early December. Um, so the markets, uh, the markets clearly been pushing to the upside. Policy momentum is still fairly strong. Uh, so in, in, in the near term, we could see further, further movement to the upside on the DAX. And if you do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up, up towards the kind of 11,600 region. Or if you draw a trend line between the highs of, um, of, of, uh, of June, July, and also September. Granted, it, it's, it doesn't go to, it, there's been some occasions where the market has gone ever so slightly above the trend line. But this, this trend line here indicates the market has been clearly been pushing lower for many months. We are rebounding, but this old trend line this old trend line resistance may come back into play so if you look to push on higher from here we could look at heading up towards kind of 5000 sorry 11520 region or maybe up to 11600 somewhere in around that bearing in mind the wider wider trend is still down, very much to the downside so it might be the case that we could run it, run into resistance at this trend line before potentially turning lower again but in the near in the near term we could push on higher here potentially another Two or three hundred points from here. If the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, keep an eye out for eleven thousand, a big psychological number, and it recently acted as a support only last week, and also coincides with the fifty-day moving average. And, and if, uh, if that metric on a few occasions throughout last summer did manage to act as resistance, so it may act as new new support. And a below a move below eleven thousand could signal that the continuation of the of the wider downward trend is back in play. I'll take a look now at the US markets, starting off with the S&P 500. Similar situation, the, US, the, movement, the, the price action of the US markets uh, with that of the European markets. So on the daily chart, um, starting off, if we draw a trend line between the lows of February 2016 and the lows of November 2016, we get this trend line along here. Uh, we can see in a few occasions back in October and also in November and a few occasions in December, the trend line was well respected. But uh, in mid-December, there was a decisive break south of the, the trend line. And as, as, as you see here in late November, the market then managed to have a sizable bounce back. But what do you know? We've pushed higher, um, we've been pushing higher for about a month now on the S&P 500, but we can't seem to get back up above that previous trend line. So what was acting as trend line support back in uh, October and November is now looking, at acting, looking as if it's acting as trend line resistance. So while we, we remain south of this trend line, the, the wider, the more recent negative trend is, like, is more likely to remain in play. But if you do actually manage to trade up, hold above, get above this trend line and close above it and press on higher from there, they could be, it could be act as support once again. So keep an eye out for this region here and we're very close to it. The trend line resistance comes into play in around this level, maybe... 2,660, 2,670. This area here is where the um, the trend line resistance comes into play. The high from last week was 77, or uh, uh, the high from the middle of the month was uh, 2,677. So we really need to kind of probably take out 2,680 and then hold above it, um, and before we become more confident that the the bounce back is continuing and the market is looking to kind of retest multi-month highs. If you do manage to move move beyond that, we could be looking at tar targeting. This red line here, the two of the two day moving average at 2,742, and the move beyond that might bring in 2,800 into play. If the market fails to, to move above the trend line, um, we could trend line resistance. We could look at heading back down towards this blue line here, the fifth day moving average, which comes to play at 2,608, and a move below that could take us back down towards this region here in around the 2,532. And then if you go below 2,500, that could be a sign that we're looking to turn over on ourselves yet again and looking at the wider downward trend uh, coming back, back into play. I'll take a look now at the, uh, the Dow Jones, and it's a similar-ish situation. Now, if you draw a trend line between the lows of February 2018, and then it notice how it runs through the lows of April, 
and also trim May, we get this trend line here. Now, I'll, 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 I'll uh, happily concede there's a few occasions when the market traded below the trend line. But by and large, it acted as support in both October and November last year. But then, of course, the market in, in about early to mid-December had a fairly very sizable sell-off, like in the S&P 500. Well, um, had a major sell-off, but then since late December, the market has been pushing higher. And once again, we see a similar situation where the market has bounced back, but yet it can't seem to actually trade above and hold above that trend line. So the old trend line support is now act, uh, acting as trend line resistance. And it's a similar situation. If we fail to get above this trend line, we could be looking at turning over on ourselves again and heading back down towards the 24,000 mark or 23,663 in around here, or perhaps even heading back down towards 23,000. But if you manage to actually trade above it and hold above it and look to kind of press on higher, we could be looking at retesting the 26,000 area. So we're pretty much at a fairly crucial area for both the S&P 500 and also the Dow Jones. Now, Dow theory tells us that the averages must confirm each other. So as we can see here, both the Dow and the S&P are just below their respective trend line resistance. If both markets fail to reclaim the trend line resistance and hold below the trend line resistance, it makes it more likely that both markets will continue to press lower. If both markets regain and move above the trend line resistance and push on higher, it makes it more likely that both markets will continue to push on um, from the late December recovery. So even if you're just, say, trading one of the, those two markets, be it the Dow or the S&P, it's good to keep an eye on what the other one is doing for kind of confirmation of the, of the move that, that, that you believe that it's in. Um, take a look now at the, oil, sorry, the gold market. So gold has managed to print, as of, uh, as of today, managed to print a level not seen since June last year, so mid-June last year, so we're talking seven-month highs. Uh, the gold market, as I said, it began its bounce back in, uh, in mid-August, mid, mid, um, mid -August, but really since about mid-November, the market's been in a fairly solid upward trend, a nice series of higher highs and higher lows. Recently, it couldn't get above the 1300 mark, and I was just about printed above it. We're pretty much on 1300 or 1301 at the moment. So the market is in very much an upward trend for the last number of months. If you can press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 1326, and then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 1335. If the market does manage to drift a bit lower and pull back a bit, Support might come into play in around the in the, in around the um the 1290 region, or definitely keep an eye out for this area here in around 1276. It act in the kind of 1276, 1277 region in around here, and uh, the recent weeks did act as, as very decent support. So keep an eye out for that. But if you do have a break below 1277, we could be looking any back down towards 1265. But it's been in a, in a fairly obvious upward trend now for for a couple of months. Uh, and if, if, if you look at back from August, it's been several months that has been that has been bouncing back. I take a look now at what's going on on the oil market. Take a look at Brent crude. So obviously the market, kind of like global equities, has been uh, has been bouncing back since late December. But we can see here that in recent set in the, in the last week or so, the move to the upside or the kind of bounce back is kind of running on steam a bit. Uh, we're largely moving sideways so the bounce back is still in play so we're well off the lows of december but notice how the market isn't really kind of making much more ground it's only kind of rain it's only kind of hanging in a certain range so if the market is going to continue the bounce back we need to be taking up this area here at 63 spot 35 and if we go beyond that we need to, to take a look at heading towards the mid november high of 68 spot 36 and then move beyond that might bring the $70 a barrel into play. Um, if the market does manage to get a drop back below the 50-day moving average here, which comes into play at 59 spot 27, we could be looking heading back down towards this region here in at 57 spot 50, and a move below that could take us back down towards 55. I'll take a look now at WTI. It's a fairly similar situation whereby the market has had a decent bounce back since uh, since late December, but it's, the bounce back is looking uh, as if it's running out a bit of steam. So this is the move higher here from uh, December 26th. The market's been pushing higher, a decent bounce back, but notice how the highs here in January really failed to take out the highs in November, which come into play at 54 spot 14. 
and we've just been trading in a fairly tight range recently. So if the market does manage to kind of run out of steam and it can't take off the November highs, we could be looking heading back down towards the $50 a barrel mark and then a move below that may take us back down towards the 47 region. And if you go below 47 bucks, we could be looking at retesting the, uh, the December lows. Uh, if you can manage to press above 54 spot 14, uh, keep an eye for this area here for the kind of mid November highs in, a, in around the uh, 58 spot 10 region. And then a move beyond that might bring the psychologically important 60 bucks a, a barrel into play. Take a look now at the euro versus the US dollar. So we saw a lot of volatility on the, uh, on the currency pair last week. Um, to be honest, in recent, in the, in the last uh, couple of months, broadly speaking, euro dollar has been kind of pushing to the upside. Um, there's been obviously, it obviously in early January hit a level not, not seen since October, but then, but then again with the ECB up, update last week, the market did manage to move lower again. Broadly speaking, we can see a few higher highs and higher lows along here. So broadly speaking, it has been pushing higher, and essentially while we remain off the the, kind of the recent lows of in around the kind of 113 region we we, we look at, we could look at uh, heading back up towards the 115 115 10 area or the recent high uh, at 115 70 and then if, if you go beyond that we could be looking heading up towards 116 uh, if we take off the recent lows and have a decent break below 113 we could be looking any back down towards the november lows of one spot 12 16. um and take a look now what's going on the pound versus the us dollar once again, Brexit is going to be in play this week. I'll be talking about that uh, when I look at the week ahead in a second. So from basically early early to mid-December onwards, with the exception of the uh, the night of the kind of the, 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 the flash crash on the currency markets in early January, the market is moving up in a fairly steady upward trend. Um, there's, there's optimism that Theresa May's Plan B deal is going to is going to is going to is going to get passed, even though Brussels don't seem to be too in favour of it, which is which is a, a very important factor. Um, but at the time being, the pound is in a fairly decent upward trend versus the um, versus the US dollar. If you can hold above uh, this red line here, the Thirty Moving Average, which comes into play just north of the kind of one pound thirty mark, uh, we could look at pressing on higher and targeting. Um, well, well, essentially, level you know. Levels not seen since the summertime in around the uh, the 133, sorry, one spot 3360 region. If you can make the press on higher from here, if you have a sizable break below the 130 mark, we could be looking heading back down towards the one, one spot 2815 uh, area in around here. But I expect volatility is going to be fairly high given uh, Theresa May, Theresa May's uh, Brexit plan B is to be, uh, to be debated on and voted on this week. I'll take a look now at the, uh, the week ahead article. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our platform, on our website rather. If you go to um, cfcmarkets.com, under news analysis, you'll find all the, uh, the various updates that myself and my colleagues on the analyst team produce and, and uh, publish. So tomorrow uh, we have the Brexit Plan B debate. So as I was just saying about volatility in starting is to be expected. Um, on Thursday, we have first quarter figures from Apple. On Wednesday, we have uh, fourth quarter figures from Facebook. Wednesday, we also have the, the Federal, Reserve, Federal Reserve meeting. Even though nothing is expected, keep an eye out for the press conference to follow. It's likely to be um, more of a, kind of a, a continuation of the recent kind of, you know, neutral to kind of dovish language, or at the very least less hawkish than you, the previous language we've heard from the Fed. You, the lever, have full your figures out on Thursday. The ASIO have half your figures out on Thursday. We have Amazon reporting their, fo their fourth quarter numbers on Thursday. Uh, on Friday, we have the Eurozone CPI numbers. Um, we also have a raft of you know, manufacturing PMI reports from around the globe on Friday. And then also, um, we, um, probably the most important update of the month, we have US non-farm payrolls uh, on Friday. Um, so please keep an eye out for that. Um, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. And that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.